Hello, welcome to week six of your course. This week we run from 14th to 18th of March, 2022. The topic for this week is Introduction to Blended Learning. I am Professor Inegbedio Juliet Owajaji. The topic will be broken into several parts. The first day, which is on Monday, we shall be looking at two subtopics. And the first topic for that day will be using theory to support blended learning practice. And the second topic will be the complex adaptive blended learning system. On Tuesday, we're going to look at two other subtopics. First is the community of inquiry theoretical framework in blended learning. And the second will be creating a community of inquiry, what the research tells us. On Wednesday, which is the third day, we will equally be looking at two subheadings. And the first topic for that day will be seven blended learning structure in education. And the second part will be blended learning as technology enabled learning in the classroom. On Thursday will be for us to attend to the discussion forums and do our assignments. And on Friday, which is the last day, we're going to meet real time. You will receive a Zoom link that you will use in joining the class. And on that same day, you are expected to take your quiz for the week. Now, let's start. The first we're going to look at today, which is the one is using theory to support blended learning practice. What is our learning outcome? The learning outcome, by the end of this topic, you will be able to define blended learning, explain the importance of blended learning, explain the need for theory in blended learning. Therefore, what is blended learning? Blended learning have been defined in different ways, in different forms. People see it differently. But we're going to look at the different ways that it has been defined. First, it is described as teaching same content to same students with the combination of traditional face-to-face -face teaching with online teaching. Again, it is seen as where students in a program take some courses using the traditional face-to-face -face and others in the same program through fully online delivery. This is classified as blended program. The third part, again, is a combination of the face-to-face -face and technology-mediated learning. Again, we have seen it as a combination of different technology for teaching and learning. At the same time, when you talk about blended learning, it could equally be described as hybrid or mixed mode learning. Now, what is the importance of blended learning? First, it is cost saving. When you go blended, it helps to save costs. How does it save costs? For example, you might have some part of the course, topics you're going to treat, maybe practicals, that you can do real time and you do it physically. Why you have others, the content parts that you can treat using the virtual. So in this case, the money that they would have paid to transport from home to school is saved. And at the same time, you could save some money if you do not have money to fund a particular uh, body, uh, the infrastructure that is required, equipment required for your practicals. You could save that money by collaborating with another. And in this instance, you discover that cost is safe. But sometimes some people may say, are you really saving costs? Are you not going to pay for the infrastructure, the internet, the devices you're going to use? But if you look at the total cost you're going to spend on the internet, institutional cost, the private cost, on the long run, it is still cheaper to go blended. Again, it encourages active participation, active engagement. When you blend, it helps the student to get more involved. The learners get more involved in what you are doing. 
Again, it provides flexibility in learning in terms of geographical location and the devices you are using. Because at the time you are blending, everybody is not stuck together in one place. It means you can diversify with what you use. Some persons might decide to join, like even in this particular course we are going through now, some people are using their phones, their handsets, while some are using the laptops, some are using desktop. So there is a variation for you. To, so we are not talking to using one altogether. Lastly, it enhances and it gives an enrichment of content through the institutional and academic collaboration. How do we mean? Academic collaboration, you might have some academics who are specialists in some areas, and this particular institution may not be able to hire them. What do you do? If you have the instructional video somewhere, you can use such instructional video to teach your own students. However, there are procedures in doing that. Some of them are free, OER. When it's OER, you are free to use it, but whereby it is not, then you can go into collaboration and have an agreement, then you will work it out how to use it. And that's safe cost. And like I mentioned before now also, when it comes to the use of uh, labs, where you have some laboratory that you really need to spend in a lot of money, institutions can come together to have one state of the art lab that their students could be using. Whereas every other thing could be taught virtually. Now, using theory to support blended learning, why theory? Why are we talking about theory? Theory will help us understand our limitations. When you go through theories, you're able to understand the limitation. A good theory or model provide foundation on, to, for the novice to build their own foundation because it gives you basics on where to build your foundation. Lastly, theory is very important because it helps us to understand others. When you look through theory, it gives you opportunity to understand what others are saying. Now, again, in this week, we're going to look at the theory and conceptual framework. Now, we have seen the importance of theory, what it can help us to achieve. Again, there are times you bring in some concepts, pull them together to come up with a framework to direct what you want to teach or learn. Now, we're going to look at this week, we'll be focusing on the complex adaptive blended learning system and community of inquiry. These are the two that we're going to look at this week. When we're talking about the complexive adaptive, what are we talking about? When we are looking at the community of inquiry, what is the focus? So we're going to see that as we walk through. So here we will have some references. We have a reference book here. Try to go through the reference book and it will help you. So in summary, for this particular section, we have looked at what blended learning is, why are we blending learning, and the role of theory in blended learning. So with this, I have some assignment for you. Here is the assignment you're going to work on. The assignment says, from your previous lectures in face-to-face -face, in a particular topic, identify activities that will be best delivered online and those that will remain as in person. So look at this from your experience, from the lectures you have taken face to face, what activity do you think will be best online and the activities that will be best delivered uh, in person. So we're going to look at your response where we meet in the live class. So thank you for listening.